Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle. From tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride, let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net slash 284, and you can email the show at pedalshift at pedalshift.net or text me at 202-930-1109 and check Pedalshift app on all the socials as well. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 284th edition of the Pedal Shift Project. My name's Tim Mooney. Thanks so much for joining. This is the fifth part, the fifth and final part of The Missing Link. And we are on this edition covering the last challenge, the final challenge of the trip, cycling to Los Angeles International Airport, better known as LAX. Starting from El Segundo and winding my way to my airport hotel, plus the next morning's complete ride, From start to finish to Terminal 1 of LAX, can we call LAX a truly bikeable airport? Quick programming note. Next week, we hit a best of the treks all the way back to 2017. And then we've got a wrap up of takeaways for the missing link the following week. Then we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be traveling completely across to the other side of the country and test out some cross borough riding in New York City. Yes, New York, New York, before returning to the studio for some topical shows as we gear up for summer. But before that, one more ride on the missing link. Back in El Segundo, and uh, I was wrong. I'm catching, I'm catching uh, some headwinds going back northbound here. Uh, it's not too bad, but it's something. And miracle upon miracles, clouds have returned, which I am not unhappy about. It's uh, it, it, it's actually felt okay, but any day I get a little cloud in there, I'm I'm, I'm good with that. So um, I'm going to be uh, shifting in inland soon saying a fond farewell to the Pacific Coast which has treated me so well not only for this trip but through the years and uh, it's always great to return always fantastic riding out here and uh, that's why I come back sometimes multiple times a year I can't imagine I won't be back at least one more time and maybe a couple times who knows uh, depending on how the calendar works out and what what's available to me The interesting thing about my day job is I do travel for it in normal times. And uh, you never know. There might be opportunities to kind of do some mini tours uh, as a part of some of those trips uh, that I do. So who knows? Could be out here a lot. Could be out here just a few more times. But I look forward to coming back nonetheless. From West Imperial Highway, we have left the headwinds behind, and I probably have a nice tailwind, although I don't notice it. Uh, And we are, oh, about halfway uh, back on this third leg of the ride, uh, going past that steam plant that I mentioned several segments ago. That's on my right-hand side. You might be able to pick up some of the audio. This is a largely a straight shot here on Imperial um, until I get uh, on the far side of LAX property. LAX property is on over my left shoulder right here. And basically I bike along the, the length of this very enormous airport and get to the other side of it. And I believe it's the hotel I'm staying at is on the northeast corner of the property. So more to come. Still on Imperial Highway, going to be uh, getting up to Aviation Boulevard in a little bit here. Um, For those of you who end your Pacific Coast uh, trips in LA, like many people do, a lot of people don't go all the way down to the Mexican border, um, which, you know, if it's a timing thing, sure, but, you know, I'd recommend because I I think that the towns and the biking south of here is, is fantastic. But if you are ending in LA, you can get to a lot of these hotels and I know camping is such a ch- is, is nearly impossible um, in LA now there might be warm showers I'm starting to hear things about whether warm showers is actually working or 
I, I, I very little data on this, but you know, if if you do need to find a hotel that is less expensive, not in one of those uh, more expensive beach towns, this is a decent option. It's not that very far. It's a full-fledged bike lane all the way up. It doesn't even get really congested until you get up towards where I am right now. Uh, but the bike lane is big and and beautiful, and there are buses too if you wanted to kind of unload and go onto a bus. Uh, but yeah, much more reasonably priced hotels up this direction. So something to think about if that is part of your Pacific Coast plans or cycling in LA plans, it's certainly an option for you. Now I gotta get through this busy intersection, so if you'll excuse me, more to come. So the final approach here, I see the motels that I'm at uh, is on Century Boulevard. And there's no bike infrastructure at all. There is a, uh, um, a, a very rideable sidewalk uh, that I'm using. Somebody just passed uh, nearby me with one of those uh, electric scooters, those e-scooters. So, you know, clearly is used for such things in this area. I, yeah, I, I would rate this as a, as a, a fairly safe uh, option. Um, hotel I'm staying at is under 100 bucks a night. So, you know, these days, that's pretty good. You can certainly pay more if you'd like. Uh, not a lot of food opportunities around here. A lot, of, a lot of gas station cuisine. It might be that kind of a night, so. Uh, but I do have to cross. I think I'm going to cross at this intersection. It's like unclear if I can at the next one. So, uh, yeah, we'll just do it that way. And, you know, it, this, this, was, uh, this was easy. This was... Uh, a very simple option for anyone. Uh, oh, wow, yeah, there's the Quintas, Holiday Inns, Motel 6s. Yeah, this is, these are the airport hotels uh, for LAX. They, they don't have one on site. I considered that, it, I, I, I considered looking at it. They tend to be very expensive, the on-site ones, but I thought that would be kind of neat just to wake up and roll out. But I'm not very far from the airport access point. I will remind myself using the internet uh, what the approach is tomorrow. Just so that I leave myself lots of time. It, it, it's, uh, th there's allegedly a, uh, a new trail of some type that, that brings you in. Um, it's part, I think, of the LA exit, or LA, yeah, LA exit, which is the, how to get out of the airport uh, through their reconstruction with uh, ride chairs and stuff like that, so anyways. from Century Boulevard in beautiful Los Angeles, California. Uh, the sun is coming up and I was up with it and I am heading to grab some coffee as I preview this, the final <laughs> incredibly short day of riding. Um, it is, I think, maybe a mile of riding, maybe two. Um, and it's effectively a straight shot down Century Boulevard. Uh, last night, I went to bed early. I uh, had, you know, a, a fair amount of sun in the face yesterday, which was fine. Um, but I was pretty tired. It was, I can't remember how much it ended up being mileage-wise. It was at least 35. So, you know, it was pretty, pretty decent. Not as much as it was supposed to be. But that's all good. Um, yes, so today... Um, I confirmed this morning, and the deal is this. I basically go back the way I came, straight shot down Century, it's all sidewalks all the way, and in fact, it goes all the way right into the arrivals level, which is where I will effectively just sort of uh, roll into, find a spot that makes some sense, and uh, do the conversion from ride mode to carry mode, and then we're in good shape. So, also in the news, today, uh, well, uh, yesterday, a federal judge ended mask mandates. I don't agree with that at all. Um, if you do, that's fine. You do you, but <laughs> here's the consequence. Um, I'm going to be wearing a mask. Uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to change how I'm going to go with uh, the whole masking thing in uh, a fair amount of public places. Um, it, it, indoors, outdoors, I've been I've been pretty chill. Indoors, I've been kind of uh, 
depends on the circumstances. Um, if I'm going to be in some place for a super short period of time, uh, it, I'll, I'll kind of, it'll depend on the circumstances. If it's for a longer period of time, like an airport with a lot of people that I don't know, or a plane with a lot of people I don't know, um, I'm going to wear a mask, at least for the, a little while. Uh, numbers are, are low, but the, the, there's a new uh, sub-variant that's uh, popping up. I would prefer not to get it. Um, I've been exposed to some people. I would prefer not to spread it if I do have it for some reason, which is possible. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be wearing, I'm going to throw the old mask on as soon as I get to uh, the airport and going inside uh, when I check my bag and all that. And I'll keep it on all the way through the trip. One other good reason why I'm going to probably do this in air uh, when flying for a while is um, I don't know about the rest of you, but often I would get colds um, real easy on planes, um, or in airports at least. And so I think one of the uh, bonuses to all this is, you know, <laughs> just being more aware of how viruses get transmitted. It's not like I didn't know that before, but, um, you know, especially on bike tours or on work trips or stuff like that, you know, it's kind of something that has been done in Asia, Asian countries forever. Uh, I, as a kid in the mid '80s, living in Japan, I think you all knew this. Um, you know, I'd see people wearing masks on the subway, and I'd be like, "Why are they doing that?" And it's like, "Oh, to prevent giving or getting colds and flu." It was like, "Oh, that kind of makes sense." I wonder why we don't do that. Anyways, um, so that's my plan uh, for the day um, and for my trip, and we will, uh, of course, be bringing you along on this final leg. Um, which I think will be kind of interesting since it's so short I'll probably end up recording the, all the audio whether you will end up hearing it or not is another thing because it might not be very interesting <laughs> but we'll see alright, more to come and we have a little bit of an update here uh, originally was supposed to be leaving at 1pm Pacific time for a not unreasonable arrival of about 9pm in DC plus a 2 hour drive to West Virginia <sighs> Well, flight is delayed two and a half hours now. <laughs> I won't be basically back to D.C. until probably midnight when all is said and done. Then I got to get to West Virginia. That's 2 a.m. And yeah, I got early morning meetings tomorrow. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Dude. All right. Well, we're just going to have to figure this all out, aren't we? All right. This is going to do it. This is the... Uh final segment of our show here and I'm going to do a little bit of a <clears throat> summary of, of things as we roll in. Uh, just a couple of thoughts on the trip so far and I think I will do a, a final, final takeaways episode at some point because I just think there's a lot that I got to process based on how this all went down. I mean, <laughs> there's just a lot, needless to say. Um, all right, so I'm about to uh, leave the hotel here and just I'm just going to hop on sidewalks the whole way. I'm literally... Uh, it, it, it's a straight shot sidewalk-wise from what I could tell down Century Boulevard. So here we are going under a one of those light-up boards, those changing boards. Lots of movie promotion here in Los Angeles. I've, I, I, and TV, too. I, I definitely know when all my shows are coming up. So one thing i got to be mindful of, thank you. Uh, I'm crossing the uh, entrance to I-405, San Diego Freeway. And it was just let right through, which was fantastic. Going under... San Diego Freeway, it is a mess down here. I think it's funny, there's just garbage everywhere, so I don't know if folks have been dumping or. Yeah, it looks like there's just been folks dumping. Yeah. Ooh. That guy's filling up, he's out of gas, filling up his car in the middle of Century Boulevard. <laughs> LA, man. What can I say? All right, so at the corner of Century and La Cienga. All right, we are rolling across La Cienga. I'm 
going to the airport quite early because I was figuring out my timing and I had to check out by 11. Um, and that still would leave a lot of extra time at the airport. And then I realized I could get access to the Alaska Lounge for uh, 50% off. So I'm going to do that early. And that comes with real Wi-Fi, unlike at my hotel where it was kind of a joke. Um, so I can download some stuff for the plane. I can work um, probably the episode, an episode of the podcast you've already listened to. And uh, yeah, just relax a little bit rather than just kind of sit in my room and just look out the window for another two hours. I figure the value proposition is there. Plus, I, I've always wanted to go into one of the Alaska lounges. I don't know about you, but when I travel, even though I tend to go early to airports, it's rarer that I'm there for long enough to make it worth getting the uh, lounge access. And, you know, I just, until my business travel starts up again a little bit more, I think there's no sense in me getting any kind of membership. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> That's it. Thanks. Take care. Uh, a couple of guys, uh, construction guys with a uh, uh, ladder and a guy put up his hand, but it was waving and I thought it was to stop. So <laughs> anyways, uh, nice and wide open here this sidewalk is so easy to be on right now i can see the parking garage or one of the parking garages for lax right now i can see the hilton which is the closest hotel this was it was not a uh to avoid a person who was on the ground, but seemed okay. All right, <laughs> urban writing. All right, so I can see that uh, the the where I say w- w- ended up being perfectly fine. Uh, it was uh, probably a third of the price of this Hilton when all was said and done. And I think the cheapest of all the hotels I ended up staying at. I am, as you probably can tell listening from all of my yammering about hotels, I am not a fancy hotel guy. Don't get me wrong, it's nice when you can kind of stay in one. But especially for just, if I'm just using it as a means to an end, a shower and a night to sleep, I am coming up on your right here. Thanks. Um, yeah, I don't care. I don't care so much. Passing by Denny's. If it weren't for the fact that the place that I was going to was going to have free food all day, I would consider a stop at the Denny's, but no, no thank you. It's one of the reasons why paying the money makes sense to me at this point. All right, now we are at Aviation Boulevard, which is where I stopped last. And about to cross here. So this will be all new road for me starting out. And this enters into... LA proper. This is the uh, actually the yellow line station for the metro train, the metro subway in LA. All right, passing by a Carl's Jr. It's you know, it's funny because I the, the last time, oh uh, let's see, this would have been a trip. This might have been the first Brompton tour that I was on. I ended up taking the train from San Luis Obispo, where I ended the tour, down to LA. And I didn't even consider looking at riding into the airport at all. I stayed at a hotel and spent 15 bucks for uh, an Uber into town. And it was just like, or into the airport. Yeah, it was just like, really? I, 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 it was a needless spend of money in retrospect, seeing how easy it is to get into the airport here. So, but of course, the most important thing is that this completes the, uh, one of the, two elements of the tour, which is to ride right from the airport into the airport uh, by bike completely on the California side. I probably could be on the road at this point. Um, It's one, two, three, four lanes. 
and I could very easily take take blame, but I think I'm just going to stick with this, even though I'm a little disruptive, or am disrupted, depending on your point of view, with the pedestrian situation. All right, I'm about to go under the first of the airport signs, arriving plates, departing plates, and rental cars, which is always a great sign. Free rapid COVID tests. That'd be interesting. I've had uh, some allergies since I've been in LA, or Southern California generally. Um, so I don't, at least that's my perception. I don't have any symptoms other than a very small bit of a drippiness. Um, I did get my fourth shot about a week ago, maybe a little bit more than that. It's just real unlikely I've got COVID. I don't think it's worth trying. getting the test done. I've only done home tests. I've never had somebody stick something up my nose. It's bad enough when I do it. All right, coming up to the Marriott. The Sinesta. There were a lot better hotel choices for a distance, but since I got wheels, who cares? Alright, crossing Airport Boulevard. There's a little more traffic now. Yeah, I, I would respect you if you decided to take the lane on this. I think you'd certainly be in the in the right to do it. But I am very happy being where I'm at. Just a minimal number of people. And dogs now. Okay, so we're going. I can now see sort of the classic LAX arch. Uh, on the other side of the Skyway uh, entrance point for vehicles, so I am <laughs> I am practically here. Oh, there's a the guy that wasn't even looking. Didn't even look. Got it. Got, yeah. When you're on a sidewalk, you have to be. I, I would argue even more defensive than if you took the lane because people just don't look at sidewalks. All right, Sheridan Gateway. The closest of the hotels. And seeing how easy it was to ride to here. Thank you. Seeing how easy it was to ride to here, that would have been an unnecessary expense. This is Avion Drive. Or Avion. Avion. All right, crossing Avion. Passing the Sheridan Gateway. A lot of uh, e-scooters here. I wonder if a lot of folks scoot their way over here and drop off at the airport and then come in. Because that looked like the... Uh, this looks feels like just the way they're all clustered. Like the uh, border where it's okay to drop off or pick up. And once you're on airport property, it's probably not okay. So about to go underneath. Yeah, we are officially, I think, on LAX property in about a hundred yards here. Oh, there, another one, Homewood Suites by Hilton. So there are many, many options for you. Oh yeah, oh, we got the classic LAX sign with the letters. I have to get a picture of that. I don't think I'll be able to get it with a bike in it, the way the angles are. But I think we should definitely do this. Let's see here. Well, now I'm too far. Well, I can get at least the LA. Pictures for you, pictures for you all. All right, we got that. And we will continue along this sidewalk here. It was interesting, the uh, Google Maps direction suggested that I take one of the roads that says pedestrians prohibited on it and frankly it doesn't look good for a bike either in my opinion that's probably fine but path of least resistance that gets you there with minimal extra time and I, I from what I saw as we're about to cross Sepulveda Boulevard which is a major thoroughfare here in LA um, I thought this was where it was going to get complicated, but then I read somebody on somebody on the internet 
um, gave a pretty detailed uh, ride map. Now, it was not useful for me because I was so close to it. But basically, suggested you make the right off of Sepulveda here and you're fine. And so I went on to Google Maps and saw, yeah, there's a crosswalk here. There's a sidewalk. It's all for, you know, folks that work here. Of course, the one cut out is very narrow. Well, I'm waiting for other folks. All right. Weave it in and out. All right. <laughs> Crossing Sepulveda turned out to be a nothing burger. So over my right-hand side is my perception would be long-term parking. Monthly parking. Got it. Yeah, oh, and uh, LA Exit. I think I mentioned this on a prior thing. This is where you pick up Uber and Lyft. So as I cross here, gotta watch out for the Uber and Lyft drivers coming through. Nobody coming right through. Wow. I'm starting to love LAX as a bicycling in and out destination. Excuse me, can I get by in there left here? Thanks so much. No problem. Let's see here. Bus. Not gonna move. Not gonna move. Okay. All right. I have hopped off and now I'm on the road. I'll probably get back on it in a moment. I am underneath the uh, entranceway here. And now it's a question of what makes the most sense to get to Terminal 6. I think I may just go all the way around. Except I think that there's gonna be many more pedestrians, so what I may do is stop in a moment. All right, off we go. And I would say we are officially on at LAX. Uh, the first of the Terminal 1, I believe it is here. Yeah, the Southwest Terminal. So I do know that I have to go quite a bit of ways around. But I think I'm gonna end it right here and declare victory. Um, that was easy. <laughs> I am struck by how easy it is to ride to and from airports these days. It's, uh, is it perfect? Is it like, is it, are some better than others? Yeah, definitely. But this was a piece of cake uh, compared to what I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna have a lot more to say about things, about this trip, about what I succeeded in, what didn't work out, all coming up. Thanks for joining. Statistics. New Airports Cycle 2. One. Times mistaken as a Los Angelian. One. I think it's Los Angelian. Is it an Angelian? I don't know. Cost of premium lounge admittance. $30. Amount of complimentary food and drink imbibed at said lounge. Solid 50 bucks. Flats. Zero. And as always, we like to close out the show with a special shout out to the Pedal Shift Society. Because of support from listeners like you, Pedal Shift is a weekly bicycle touring podcast with a global community. Expanding into live shows and covering new tours, if you like what you hear, you can support the show for five bucks, two bucks, or even a buck a month. And there's one shot and annual options. If you're not into the small monthly thing, check it all out at pedalshift.net slash society. On to the society. Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lean, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Keith Nagel, Brock Dittus, Thomas Skeda, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Harry Telgatis, Chris Barron, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Mr. T, Nathan Poulton, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Cody Florchinger, Tom Beninati, Greg Braithwaite, Sandy Pizio, Jeff Muster, Seth Pollock, Joseph Quinn, Drew Porter, Byron Patterson, Joachim Robert, Ray Jackson, Jeff Fry, Kenny Mikey, Lisa Hart, John Denkler, Steve Hankel, Miguel Quinones, Alejandro Avilas Reyes, Keith Spangler, Greg Towner, Jody Zoranen, Lucas Barwick, Michael Baker, Brian Bechtal, Reinhardt Biggle, Greg Middlemas, Connie Moore, William Gothman, Brian Benton, Joan Churchill, Mike Bender, Rick Weinberg, Billy Crafton, Gary Matushak, Greg Latois Lopez, James Sloan, Jonathan Dillard, John Funk, Ronald Paroli, Dave Roll, Brian Hafner, Misha LeBlanc, Ari Messenger, David Grotke, Todd Grosbeck, Wally Estrella, 
Sue Reinert, John Lico, Stephen Granada, Philip Mueller, Robert Lackey, Dominic Carroll, Jackie McCullough, John Hickman, Carl Presso, David Neves, Patty Louise, Terry Fitzgerald, Peter Steinmetz, Timothy Fitzpatrick, Michael Lazuski, Hank O'Donnell, David Zanoni, David Weil, Matthew Sponsell, Chad Reno, Spartan Dale, Carolyn Ferguson, Peggy Littlefield, Lauren Allen Smith, Eric Burns, Thomas Pearl, Darren McKibben, Richard Stewart, Dave Fletcher, Jack Smith, Luke Parkinson, Ryan Patterson, and new to the society, Sarus Faravar. And thanks also to all past and anonymous folks for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available.